You all know the dramatic story of United Flight 93. It left Newark International Airport bound for San Francisco and uh, left six minutes before the American Airlines plane that went into the Pentagon left. That left from New York. Hijacked by four men shortly after takeoff in the time between the hijacking and the plane's final fatal plunge into Pennsylvania, passengers made cell phone calls to loved ones on the ground and evidence strongly suggests that many passengers stormed the hijackers and prevented them from flying the plane and literally took it into the ground. Let's meet our guests, relatives of these heroes. In New York is Liz Glick. She lost her husband, Jeremy, on Flight 93. In Fort Myers is Lorne Lyles. He lost his wife, Cece, a flight attendant on that flight. In San Francisco is Alice Hoagland. She lost her son, Mark. Mark had called from a cell phone a little less than a half hour before it went down. We'll get her story. The now very familiar Lisa Beamer is in New York. She lost her husband, Todd, on Flight 93. She's expecting another child next month. In Littleton, Colorado, is Sandy Dahl. She lost her husband, Captain John Dahl, the captain of that airplane. Kimmy Bevan is in San Francisco. She lost her husband, Alan, spoke with him just before the flight took off. And in Orlando is Gerald Bingham. He lost his son, Mark, as well, and he found out from his ex-wife, Alice, about the call from the plane. Let's start with Liz Glick. What happened, Liz? How did you hear from Jeremy? Um, he had called me uh, that morning after the flight had uh, taken off. Um, I think the plane had been in the air for about 40 minutes. Um, I was already aware of what was going on with the World Trade Centers, um, but really hadn't made the connection um, you know, that one of these planes could have been Jeremy's. Um, and then, as I said, we had gotten the call around, uh, I guess it must have been around 9.35. And what did um, he say? He told me that there were some bad men on board. He described them to me. Um, he told me they were wearing red headbands um, and that they had what uh, they claimed to be a bomb. Um, from there, our conversation um, took a more personal note. Um, I think he sensed a panic in my voice and um, you know, we just started repeating, I love you, I love you, I love you to one another. Um, and both of us were able to pull it together and then um, we made a, you know, he made a plan. He was asking me questions, what was happening in New York? Were they crashing planes into the World Trade Center? And I told him, uh, yes, they were. And then uh, he asked me, um, you know, should he attack the terrorists? Um, and at that point, seeing what I had seen, I told him uh, to go ahead and do it. He had been uh, talking with some of the other passengers um, and conferring uh, with them as well. Mm. Uh, were, was anyone with you? Were you alone? I was actually at my parents' house um, with my daughter. We had a, a daughter that was only 12 weeks old at the time um, that all this happened, and Jeremy was traveling for a business trip, so I had gone up to uh, my family's. Did he talk to your parents, too? He talked to them briefly. When they answered the phone, um, he said, put Lizzie on, and they immediately handed the phone to me. How did the conversation end, Liz? What happened when, you, when, you, when he hung up? Um, he told me, uh, I love you, um, hold on to the line and I'll be right back. And at that point I just couldn't uh, bear to listen anymore. So my dad was standing next to me and I handed the phone to him um, and he took it from there. And what did he hear? Um, he had heard a series of screams and then there was nothing for a few minutes and then he had heard a series of more screams and then nothing. Did you and pretty much know then, Liz? Um, my mind wasn't going there. I was hoping, you know, I, I was thinking, how could this happen? We are in a happy time in our life. We just had a baby. So I was praying and hoping, uh, you know, really beyond hope from what I was seeing unravel with my own eyes. How are you doing now, by the way? Um, I'm, doing, I'm doing surprisingly well. Um, I draw strength from the conversation that I had with him um, on a daily basis. And I think if he could be so strong in those last moments, then I can be strong as I go forward. Okay, you stay right with us, Liz. We're going to come sure. back to everybody. Lauren Lyles is in Fort Myers. He lost his wife, Fifi, uh, Cece, rather, a flight attendant. She's a, uh, Cece was a former cop, right? Yes, she was. Yeah. And how, what happened on your call? She called you. What happened, Lauren? Uh, I got the call of probably about two minutes to 10. And when I got the call, I was in the sleep because I worked, uh, from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. So I had just so got you didn't know about the World Trade Center or the or the Pentagon. No, I did not. I had no idea that was going on. My TV so was what on did, sport. So what did she say to you? Uh, she just when I answered the phone, I said, hello. I looked at the caller. I didn't see it. Seen it was her. So I said, um, I answered the phone like I normally do. I said, hello, babe. How you doing? 
And she just said, babe, because that's what we call each other. She said, um, my plane has been hijacked. I'm just calling to let you know that I love you. And I tell the kids that I love them. And I thought that she was joking. I thought that it was, you know, you know, the plane was delayed and she was just, even though she never joked like that before, you know, something like that when somebody say that, you just hope that they're joking. And that's what I guess when I said that, I was hoping that she was j joking, but she wasn't. But you didn't know anything about death or anything. You must have thought she was going to land somewhere, right? I thought that it was just like what we see on TV, uh, hijacking, take the plane someplace, make demands, hostage negotiation. That's what I thought. So that, that was a quick conversation, right? No, our conversation actually lasted for about two minutes. And um, we were just, she was just telling me that she loved me, tell the kids, and then we said a prayer. And then she said that they were, she said that, okay, it's getting ready to happen. And then she said, uh, they fortunately went into the cockpit. She was, you know, just detailing what was happening. And then she started screaming. Then she started talking to me, telling me that she loved me. Then she, start, she started screaming again. Then we got disconnected. Did you then turn on to turn to other channels? Did you know then about the World Trade Center and the rest? No, it, it never crossed my mind to turn on the TV because I didn't think that nobody on TV knew what was going on. So, so what did you I, do? I called the um, United Airlines and they confirmed that the flight was hijacked. So then I called my police department. Then they came over to assist me. We'll come back to you, Lauren. All right, Alice, you lost your son, Mark, on the flight. He called what? Uh, he, called he called you from it. the plane as well? Yes, he did. Uh, the call came in at 6.44 a.m., which would have been 9.44 uh, Eastern time, and uh, we spoke for maybe three or four minutes. He actually talked to three people. Uh, he was able to tell Kathy, his, his aunt, my, my brother Vaughn's wife, I want to tell you guys that I love you in case I don't see you again. And then... Kathy said to him, well, we love you too, Mark. Let Talk to your mom. And I came on the phone and Mark, I heard Mark's voice and he said, mom, this is Mark Bingham. And I could tell from that that he was a little agitated and he said, I want to let you know that I love you. He didn't say, in case I don't see you again, to me. Mark was forever trying to shield me from things, and so I don't think I got the full story from him. It was wonderful that Liz Glick and her dad and Dina Burnett were able to give their loved ones the information they needed to make a plan and take action. Did uh, you know about the World Trade Center and the Pentagon? Not until we were disconnected. Uh, we're three hours earlier. There are new babies in the in the house. We didn't know anything about it. But after after the call from Mark came in, we turned on the TV. Then it all became clear that what Mark was involved in was just part of a big, ugly mosaic of terror. And my brother Vaughn said, get Mark back on the phone and tell him that it's a suicide mission and he needs to do what he can. So I called back, left a message on his cell phone. He, um, I told him, Mark, you need to do what you can do. He didn't need to hear that message. He had already made a decision. I'm so glad to hear that they took a vote. They calmly decided what they were going to do and the, the passengers worked together and that means a great deal to me. It's very interesting to hear Lauren's uh, story about how CC called him more or less right as the passengers went into their act. It's a, it was really a horrific story. We'd, we'd like to Alan, hear the cockpit voice recording. You haven't yet? Not yet. Well, do Not you yet. intend, do you think they will eventually let you all hear it? I, I, I have great hope that they will. Dina Burnett has requested it formally. I've requested it informally. Other family members have said that they would like to hear it. Kimmy, Kimmy Bevan has said that it's the most important record we have of how our loved ones spent their last half hour or so. And you, I agree uh, with that wholeheartedly. And you called your ex-husband Gerald to tell him? He called me. He called me sometime later and I really felt terrible having to be the one to tell him. Boy. Uh, whew. Oh, I gather all of you know each other, huh? We, we're Everybody trying to get to know each now. other. I'm uh, putting I together a bit of a newsletter. Oh, really? The best-known lady up to this point is Lisa Beamer. She's at our studios in New York. You learned, in New Jersey, rather, you learned all about it, Lisa, from a cell operator, right? Right. A Todd had made a phone call from the plane to a GTE air phone operator, and that's what I found out about um, the Saturday following the 11th. 
He, he, uh, he uh, couldn't contact you direct? I think he made a conscious decision not to contact me directly. I was here by myself with the boys and um, certainly couldn't do anything to help him. And I think initially he thought his plane was being hijacked in a traditional sort of hijacking where they were going to take the plane down. And from what we know of the voice box recorder so far, the terrorists did tell the passengers that um, everybody needs to remain calm and they're going to take the plane uh, to an airport and make some demands. And initially when Todd called the operator, he was simply calling to report that information and make sure that the ground was uh, prepared for what might be demanded from the airplane. Was uh, Todd the one that said, let's roll? He was. We'll come right back with you, right back with uh, and meet our other members of the panel as well, and then we'll have general discussion among all of them. And we'll include some phone calls as well. Don't go away. We're back. Uh, a couple more for Lisa Beamer. We're, we're, we're keeping our entire panel together, and there'll be questions for everyone. Do you feel a close tie to that operator who called you to tell you the story, Lisa? I do. Obviously, the first time I talked to her was um, very emotional. As you know, I knew she was the last person that I could talk to who could um, relay what happened to Todd in those last few minutes. Um, and it's certainly a bond that you never expect to have. But um, we've kept in touch since September 11th, and I think we'll continue to do that. And do all of you, uh, are all of you in touch with each other, Lisa? Uh, yeah, we've, we've had opportunities to meet at the crash site and at the White House, and now uh, Mark's mother, Alice, has put together um, some email correspondence. So um, I think, you know, we, like I said, we have a bond that is unusual, but um, will be valuable mm. to us in the days ahead. That you'll share the rest of your lives. Yeah, and especially yeah. our children, too. Yeah, you're right. Sandy Dahl is in Littleton, Colorado. Her husband, Captain John Dahl, was the captain of Flight 93. Is, is, it, is it right? Uh, well, well, I have written John. Your husband's name is Jason? It's Jason. Okay. They wrote John. I'll change it to Jason. So I want to be completely correct. Okay. Sandy, uh, is it right that he wasn't supposed to fly that day? No, that isn't right. He was supposed to fly that day. Oh, he was? Yes, he called me to trade him into the trip from London, and so we, he would have more time off after the trip for our anniversary. Uh, naturally, you uh, obviously did not hear from him during the flight. No, no, he was busy trying to keep a hold of his airplane, I'm sure. Mm. Now, did you know before anything about your husband, did you know about the World Trade Center and the Pentagon? Yes, I just turned the television on when I woke up, and um, I was hearing all about it, but nothing about United. It was all American at that time. Did you have any fears for your husband at that time? Yes. Anybody in the sky. I'm a flight attendant myself, and I have lots of friends and loved ones out there, and I was afraid for everyone. How did you hear about United 93? It came on the news, and the night before, he'd called and asked me to look up his flight number for him on the computer, so I remembered the flight number, and that's how I heard you remember your first reaction? I just fell down on the floor <laughs> right mm. then. Just, just, I was just destroyed and still hoping that maybe it was uh, a crash landing and not a crash. Did you meet uh, via flying? Yes, we did. Yes. Flight to Spokane. Wow. <laughs> Flight to Spokane. Do you have children? Yes, we do. We have um, two, two children by my first marriage and one child by his first marriage. And are they with you? My children are grown mm -hmm. and out of the house, and Matthew went to live with his mother full time. How are things going for you? As well as I can, I can get along without him. I, we just did everything together, and it's just hard. But I'm um, a strong person, and um, I feel like he's here with me anyway. Uh, do you want to hear the flight recorder too? Yes, I do, but in a private setting, not on the news. <laughs> Yeah. Kimmy Bevan is in San Francisco. She lost her husband, Alan Bevan, on the flight. Um, what were his circumstances? What was he going to San Francisco for, Kimmy? 
He was going back to try a Clean Water Act case. He was an environmental attorney, and we were spending, we spent the summer in New York. The day before the flight was our eighth wedding anniversary. And mm. he was flying back to spend the week settling or uh, litigating his final Clean Water Act case in California. Uh, did you speak with him before he got on the plane? Yeah, he called at 7 from the airport to say he had checked in and he loved us and he was hoping to be back by the weekend. All right, did you know about the Trade Center and the Pentagon? I did. My brother called me moments after um, the first Trade Center was hit. So I was following it on the news and initially they were saying it was a commuter plane. And then when they said it was an American flight, I started getting scared and I called United right away. And the person I spoke with said, United Flight 93 is fine. Um, so I went and I actually found out about the crash on CNN. So a CNN report tells you that a United flight, does it identify the flight number? Yeah, it said it's confirmed that United Flight 93 has crashed in Pennsylvania. And I didn't know his flight number, but they said the time that it departed from Newark. And I knew that it was his plane. What did, what did you do? I, um, at first, I just, I, I was just reeling with shock and disbelief. It was, it was so unimaginable. Um, hmm. So I, I just, I don't know, it was overwhelming. Every indication was that um, he was involved in the overthrow too, wasn't he? Yeah. That's the I believe that getting, completely, yeah. yeah. That all these people were heroes. Yes, they were. Hmm. And Gerald Bingham, now you lost your son, Mark. We already spoke with your ex-wife, Alice. Gerald is in Orlando. You called Alice uh, to inquire about Flight 93? Was that why you were calling her, Gerald? No, sir. No, uh, we, I'd been trying to, uh, to get a hold of... Uh, uh, I was watching everything unfold on, t on uh, TV, right. and uh, I didn't know where his office was that he just opened up in New York, so I was just trying to get a hold of him just to you know, make sure that uh, I had no idea about Flight 93. You, so uh, you didn't, know, didn't he know he was flying that day? No, I didn't. So you just called your ex-wife to find out where to get in touch with Mark? Well, and how I, did we started, yeah, started worrying, and then uh, my, my wife got off work, and she said, you know, she said something's not right because she hasn't been able to get a hold, nothing on the cell phone or anything at that yeah. time. It was about 1130. How did your ex-wife tell you? It wasn't easy. I know it wasn't. Uh, she... Um, uh, she said that uh, he he was on that plane on that flight 93, which I knew then it, it crashed into Pennsylvania, and uh, my God, it was it was um, it was devastating. Yeah, we'll take a break and come right back and have questions for all of our guests. Uh, you're watching Larry King live. Tom Cruise is with us on Sunday night. Don't go away. Before we take a call, Liz Glick in New York, have you heard anything about medals for the, for the passengers and the like? Um, just in the uh, beginning, maybe a week or two after everything had happened, I had heard some talk. Um, I was actually sent a petition to sign online, um, but since then I haven't received any um, news from that from our congressmen or um, government, no. Lauren, has, uh, has United taken good care of you? Uh, have United taken good care of me? Mm, that's a very difficult question. Uh, at the beginning, yes, but ever since the memorial service, uh, which we had on the 22nd of September, I really haven't heard from United Airlines. The caller is from Milwaukee. Hello. Milwaukee, are you there? Hello? Yes. Go ahead. What's Hello. your question? I would uh, like to ask your panel um, if they feel... Um, that uh, having 
spoken to their relatives, husbands, uh, friends, before um, they perished, um, did they arrive, uh, derive a lot of credit, uh, comfort from that? Alice, are you glad you spoke to your son? It made all the difference in the world to me. Hearing it from Mark's lips made it, uh, made it more bearable. Lauren, are you glad you spoke to Cece? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I, that that our last conversation it helped me. It helps me through my days because my days are very rough. So it helps Liz, me a lot. Liz, you glad you spoke to Jeremy? <clears throat> I'm very glad that I spoke with him, um, and I know his last moments uh, weren't filled with panic and terror. And um, you know, I also know how he wants me to continue my life. He had told me that when we had spoke, so it gives me a lot of comfort. Houston, Texas, hello. Um, hi, thanks for taking my call. I'm interested to know if the overwhelming support that we see around the country is um, comforting to the people with, with small children or if it's so much that the children sort of need a break from it all, if it's helpful or not. Uh, let's go to those who have small children. Uh, Lisa, how are your children dealing with it? My children don't really know about the big picture here. They certainly know that daddy's gone and they know how it happened as far as a plane crash, but they don't know um, the terrorist piece of it. Um, but I think in the future when they're old enough to know that and know how um, the people associated with September 11th have been just overwhelmingly been taken care of and the compassion of the American people and the patriotism and everything that's come out of this, I think it might make it easier for them. Kimmy, do you have small children? Yes, I do. I have a five-year-old daughter, and in the same situation as Lisa, that she doesn't know a thing about terrorism and hasn't really been exposed to a lot of the publicity side of it. But I think for most of us, the support of family, friends, and the nation has meant a lot. Sandy, how has United Airlines been to you as the wife of the captain? United Airlines has been marvelous to me, and um, I have a lot of support from fellow pilots and fellow flight attendants. Um, they've been very nice. Have you been financially helped, uh, 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 Liz Glick, in New York? Have you been financially helped yet? Um, by United? Yeah. Um, yes, in the beginning, um, we did receive a compensation. I do believe um, all families received a small amount um, to help with funeral costs. Um, but since then, I haven't heard anything else from them. Has anybody heard? Gerald, have you heard anything with regard to your son and United? Uh, no, sir, I haven't. No. Not since, Alice, not since the uh, memorial. No. Alice, have you heard from the airline since the memorial? Well, like Liz, uh, like like uh, Liz Glick, we we received a small stipend as well, and uh, but uh, United has been very generous with us at dealing with the memorial costs and and uh, funeral costs, things like that. I imagine that now that we are over the initial stage, we'll probably have to get into into the issue of costs and and uh, compensation for the loss of our loved ones' lives. Oh, the, the going on, is that the hardest thing, Lisa? I know your faith is the thing that drives you, right? Right. Makes it uh, easy to keep the big picture, eternal perspective, but it doesn't mean that some days aren't hard. Um, and little children certainly help get you up in the morning and get you motivated to put the Christmas tree up and do all the things that, um, that we would normally be doing this time of year. So that's certainly been a helpful piece as well. I would bet, Gerald, you think of your son every day. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Not a day goes by. It's uh, on my mind all the time. And uh, yeah. we, we really miss him and we really love him. And we thank you all. Relatives of heroes. Liz Glick, Lauren Lyles, Alice Hoagland, Lisa Beamer, Sandy Dahl, Kimmy Bevan, and Gerald Bingham. Melissa Eldridge will close things off tonight with an appropriate song, Melissa Etheridge, rather, uh, titled Heal Me. Before Melissa sings, we're going to show you a scene tonight at Ground Zero. They lit a Christmas tree. We'll be right back.